Huh? I see some familiar faces. Hello. Um, let's see. Okay. Does everybody see my screen? Is that working? Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Helen. <laughs> Um, so thanks so much for stopping in. Uh, we're going to be talking about activities using dynamic media with children's books. And I'm just going to let some more people pop in before I dive in. But I, I would love it if this is more like, a, you know, a back and forth, a chat. But um, I definitely have some things to share. So I have a Wakelet and I shared my ideas on the Wakelet and a link to my presentation there. So everything I'm sharing, you'll have access to. But um, I would love it if you would contribute and add your ideas to the Wakelet. And um, Let's see, you could be putting things in the chat as well. You know, I wonder if I were to look at the chat while I'm presenting, if um, if that would even work. Maybe I could set up my screen so I could do that. Let me see if I can. Right now, the chat is hiding. Does that work? Does that change anything? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump in. Um, so I'm Trisha Fugelstad. I'm a K-5 art teacher in um, Illinois. And I'm not a librarian, but I do support literacy the best I can in my art program. So I put together a collection of the lessons that I do that are um, really engaging using um, dynamic media with my elementary students based on different children's books. So we're gonna take a look at those and um, you know, you can have questions for me about them. Maybe at the end, so I'm a little afraid to like pull up my chat window. For some reason, sometimes like when people pull up their chat window, it makes a black box on the screen. I know there's a setting that makes that go away, but I forgot what it is. So <laughs> if you wanna like unmute and tell me what I'm doing wrong, you can help me out. But um, let me just dive in. Okay, the first book I wanna look at is The Snowman by Raymond Briggs, who I think he just recently passed away. So we are probably familiar with the story, but if you're not, um, a little boy makes a snowman, oh, spoiler alert, um, cause it's kind of gonna tell the plot, but he the he's super excited about the snowman and then the snowman comes to life hangs out with them, they play together, and they even go for a flight over his town at night. So I was really, in, you know, loving this story and the concept of flying with your snowman. So as an art teacher, I wanted my students to create a snow friend. And I wanted them to think about how to do some shading and highlighting as they're working on that piece of art wanted them to um, also, you know, think of creative ways to, you know, accessorize their snow brand. So we did some shading with color pencils and designed their snow friend. And then I thought, you're gonna do this at night. And so they need to learn, in this case, about a, a cityscape, a silhouette, and how to make it look like it was moving. So in this case, I, I wanted green screen for the child. So a video of them as if they're flying. And then I wanted them to be flying over the 
cityscape. So the cityscape had to be stop motion animation. So it showed some movement, which was a really pretty simple formula for my students. They worked collaboratively. They um, connected their cityscapes together. And so they, if there were three kids at the table, they had a three cityscape long strip of paper, and then they fed it under the I've had and um, created a stop motion animation from it. Then the green screen part was hilarious. The kids loved it. We just set up a bench and draped the green screen over it. But the, the real funny part was um, the scarf wigglers. So they we needed to make it look like they were flying and that the wind was blowing. So we had some green thread and we wiggled off screen. <laughs> we took turns with those jobs. There's the wrinkle patrol kids and then there's the scarf wiggler and then we rotate jobs and go to the next. So the whole thing was put together with the green screen app by Do Inc, which allows you to work in three layers which is perfect for this lesson. So we had foreground, um, which was the green screen. Middle ground was the, the snowman in this case. And the background was the animated cityscape. So then kids had to resize, put it all together. Lots of learning, plus completely engaging with the imagery and imagination that came from the story. Also, you're seeing augmented reality, which is totally a bonus. In this case, I set up an augmented reality for some of the students' examples so that they would come to life right off the wall. We use iJack app to do that. I'll be talking more about augmented reality. So here is our next book. This one is called The Color Monster. Does everybody know this story? It's a wonderful social emotional learning story. And I, um, as an art teacher, again, I'm intrigued by the idea of connecting color with emotion, which is definitely something an artist needs to think about when they're creating paintings. So I thought, why don't we connect, like, learn from this book and connect to the primary and secondary colors. And then we will have created a mood meter with our, our monsters. But then I thought we can make our monsters even more expressive if we make them movable and then do stop motion animation along with it. So we made our monsters out of cardboard and attached moving pieces. Like we wanted the eyebrows to be movable so they could express more emotion with their eyebrows and their arms and their legs were movable so we attached with um, brass fasteners and so students went through stages they created the art connected it to emotion thought about the expression and then they created a stop motion animation collaboratively um, where they enhanced the expression through movement and then um, we displayed their finished art with augmented reality again. So just briefly, augmented reality is something that is really good for showcasing transdigital art. So transdigital art is art that is both physical and digital. And in this case, the true experience of this piece of art is transdigital. You need to see it physically and digitally. So when it's connected through augmented reality, you get the full experience. So we're again using the iJack app for that. Are we getting questions about that? I, I, I'm just suspecting that we're getting questions about augmented reality. Should I stop for a moment and check the chat and make sure that everybody's good? Let me do that. You know, I don't know how to find it. You know what? How do I find the chat? How can I just keep going? And then we'll we'll get questions at the end. All right. Let's take a look at the Lima Bean Monster. Well, um, the Lima Bean Monster 
has a really good tumble book video and it drew me in right away because I really loved the narrator's expressive voice and when she spoke I um I love the story and I I even quote her all the time I you know the story is about a it's actually very funny the kids really love it um about a boy who um didn't want to eat his lima beans so he hit them and then they grew into a big lima bean monster and started to threaten the entire city and so the only way to solve the problem was to finally eat your vegetables <laughs> so so the, the message is adorable and um the concept of a monster and vegetables was really funny to me and we decided to turn it into a really fun engaging lesson so students created a lima bean monster and i'm talking first graders so we were working on shapes basically like here is a head shape here is a shape that we can use for our nose here's a shape that we could use for eyes and how can we show expression and Here's a shape for to get us started on our mouth. And we we just worked in shapes and then we worked in color and then we outlined. It was pretty simple, straightforward art lesson. But the fun part was when we did a digital collage. So students were asked, what is your favorite vegetable? And um, that writing segment took about 25 minutes just to write that one word for what their favorite vegetable is, you know, whether it's carrot or um, tomato or whatever. So they, they wrote what their favorite vegetable was and then they chose from my plastic vegetable assortment um, their, to hold their favorite vegetable along with some monster hands, you know, and I had a few options for that and they posed in front of green screen as a monster. and but their face didn't matter. We had to pull up our hair if we had long hair because we knew that we were gonna do a digital collage. And so they um, took their a digital image of their monster, put it over their body. And as first graders, that is an amazing accomplishment, but the Do Ink green screen app is super easy to use. So they figured it out right away. And then we turned it into a poster. So I had made some poster backgrounds and they could choose their favorite and they put themselves into the eat your veggie poster. And these look great in the cafeteria and children inspiring other children to eat their vegetables. So I'm here by um, Peter H. Reynolds. How many people know this one? You can give me a little thumbs up because I can see your face, your little screens. Um, so it, I don't know how popular this book is, but it really needs to be. It's such a sweet story. It's about inclusion and it, the setting is recess and a boy that has um, sensitivity to loud noises is out at recess and he cannot join the group because it's just too loud. And so he wants connection, he wants friendship. He takes a piece of paper, folds it up as an airplane and um, throws it out towards the group of kids. And in, in sort of like a bid for connection and a little girl gets the airplane and returns it to him. And they have like a one-on-one -on -one little connection of friendship. But while he is watching that airplane fly to the friends or potential friends, he imagines himself on it. And there's a scene in the book where he's riding the airplane. And so again, here we are riding and flying. But um, that's the moment that you're seeking friendship and in the story. So I really wanted to capture the that moment and have my students think about friendship. What does it mean to be a good friend? What can you do if you see others want to connect with you? So we can have those conversations in the classroom. Plus you'll see on my screen, the kids also had a chance after they made their paper airplane to fly them just to check them out, which 
as a side note, that is the moment that my principal decided to just pop in, see what we're up to in the art room. Oh, it was, a <laughs> I was so flustered at that moment that she came then and I couldn't explain what we were doing. So I was, and she's like, I'm sure this is educational. And she left. <laughs> and I'm, it was educational. Uh, the next thing we did is we um, learned to animate clouds. So this time I wanted to teach digital animation. And originally when I did this, we used the Do Ink Animation app, but now that they have drawing and animation tools in, in the Do Ink Green Screen app, the whole lesson can be done in that one app because it'll take the green off of the airplane background. You can animate your um, clouds and you can um, incorporate a green screen video of the students. So you'll see that the kids did some pretending and while they were pretending that they were riding their airplane, they could be kneeling, they could be standing, they could be um, you know, just acting out something that they would feel at the moment that they're searching for friendship. And then that's a good discussion that we had when we were done. What does it mean to be a friend? The next book I wanted to look at is called Go Away, Big Green Monster. So in Go Away, Big Green Monster, there it's a really fun story and it's old. Um, and I think I just, I found like a used version where a three-year-old or something had ripped pages out of it because I think it was just a little too intense. Um, <laughs> the monster kind of disappears from page to page. You know, I, as you say, you see the monster, but then you say, go away. And then like part of the face disappears at that part. And then you flip the page and another part of the face disappears. So I did this project again with first graders where we focus on, you know, what are the parts of our face when we make this monster? We need these eyes, we need the nose, we need a mouth, eyebrows, really simple stuff. And we were doing the, the construction paper version uh, where we added to the face to make a monster, it's the opposite of what's happening in the book, where we're taking away in the book, we're adding in the art. And then once we had our monster, we um, animated our monster. So this is a make it, move it lesson. So this is a little tricky for first graders, but um, the method that we used for animating was super straightforward. And I just kind of made it um, formulaic basically, so that we could all have success. So I said, we're going to, you know, close the eyes, we're going to shut the mouth. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So we um, took a digital picture, put it in a drawing app on the iPad. We, in this case, use the brushes app, which is a free app. And we match the colors and we color down the eyelids a little bit. And we close the mouth by matching colors and color it in it. I have a tutorial um, that I would show them ahead of time and um, give them the big picture view of how this works. And once we get our individual pictures, we only, you know, we had an original and then we made three pictures that were in different stages. Um, so for a total of four, and then we turned it into a GIF. And then the GIF was our animated monster. Once you have a still image and an animation, you could put the two together for augmented reality. And so you're seeing um, what I did with a mug. So this piece of art uh, was done by a first grader and it won an art show. And I, I received a mug with his art on it through Artsonia, which is, our Sonia is the online um, portfolio, digital portfolio for my students. So I went to iJack app and I set up augmented reality and um, it generates a code for me. So once I use the iJack 
app with that code, it remembers it. So if I go into the cabinet and I see using this app, um, the monster on the mug, the mug will start, you know, I don't know what that is, coming to life for me. So I love to, I call this the um, Fugal Fun House. So in my house, and like you'll see like even the robots on the wall behind me and the other robots in the room, they all come to life with augmented reality because I really love when you can connect your art and your animation, put them together and showcase your transdigital art. So the next one I want to share is giraffes can't dance, but they're, you know, they can actually, <laughs> they can dance. That's what we learned. So um, about eight years ago, I had gone to Kohl's and I found that they were in their Kohl's care program. They were um, selling these plush um, giraffes and the book giraffes can't dance. So I decided to buy six plush giraffes and the book. And I'm like, I'm going to do this lesson. And then I brought it to the art room, sat down, looked at it and said, oh, it's too hard. This is way too hard. How am I going to teach like second graders how to not only draw a giraffe, but like make it look convincing that a giraffe is in a dance pose. I just couldn't figure it out. So I'm like, no, giraffes can't dance. This is too hard. <laughs> so, so I had this, this bin of giraffes. Am I going late? I forgot to look at, okay, I'm still good. Sorry. <laughs> I had a bin of giraffes in um, my art room for the longest time, I guess like, you know, six, seven years. And I, it would taunt me every time I'd pass it. These giraffes, these unloved giraffes never danced until finally I was in, um, I was in a creativity challenge on Twitter and Kim Darche was reading a book about creativities and um, she was challenging herself every day to do something creative. And I was following along on Twitter. And one day she said, come up with eight things a giraffe can't do. And I'm like, well, definitely it can't dance. <laughs> and so then I'm like, hold it. What else can't a giraffe do? And so I had some fun drawing all these different things that giraffes can't do. But then when I was doing it, I was like, well, maybe I've got the wrong message here. Just because I can't figure it out doesn't mean I don't try. And that is the message of like the whole thing. Like, yeah, you're not perfect at dancing. Gerald, the giraffe was really, you know, clumsy, but he wanted to dance. And I will teach this lesson kind of clumsy, but I want to get them to dance. You know, these giraffes, we can figure it out. So I'm sorry, I'm going really deep into this story, but it was such a like aha moment for me when I realized I was being held back by perfectionism or something and I need to just go forward and start a campaign, you know, giraffes can campaign and go ahead and give it a try. And so I told my students ahead of time that I didn't know if I could do this. <laughs> And I pushed through anyway, and they were along for the ride with me and we figured it out. And here's the secret, popsicle sticks. Popsicle sticks concretely help you figure out the arms and the legs. You just lay them on your paper, figure out your po with popsicle sticks, how you want your legs and your arms to look, then trace around it and you've got it. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. So it came through, so you can, you have my secret now, and that's how drafts can dance. So we made an augmented reality um, book cover animation, made that come to life. And we um, also decided that Gerald should dance under the stars or whoever their giraffe is. So we have some UV paint and black light flashlights, and we celebrated the dancing with a digital dance party as well. So we took that giraffe and we um, animated it in the green screen app by doing. Oh, I can see you guys have a lot of questions. I am almost done. 
because the very last thing I want to share is what I'm working on now, and I really don't have much to say about it, except that I am a future author, and I'm super excited about it. I am working on an augmented reality children's book, and it's about Peter Ometer, and he is a programmable, empathetic, touch-sensitive, emotional robot. And so Peter um, will be coming to life with augmented reality as he works on um, his emotions because he becomes emotional when his buttons are pushed. So I um, am working through Future Goals Publisher Publishing, and um, they are going to help walk me through the steps. So right now, I submitted my manuscript, and I'm working um, on my sketches and my animations, and we'll see what happens, and you can follow my journey on my blog. I'm going to quit out of this now, and hopefully... We'll be able to see what those questions are in the chat because I think, yes, I can see them now. Okay, so if you want to unmute and ask me a question, that's fine. We have a little bit of time still, but otherwise I'm going to, hey, Erica's here. Hi, beautiful. <laughs> how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Um, so I see that you're presenting later today too. What are you presenting? I am, I am presenting later um, creative video production in uh, around seven o'clock. So I got to do my hair clearly before then. <laughs> oh, yeah, carry beautiful. on, carry on with your beautiful self. I just love your presentations. They're so good. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm just seeing that people are saying hello. Um, what is the name of the app? So what do you think that question is? Deb was asking, is Deb still here? Deb, what app are you asking about? Oh, it might've been answered because Helen said green screen app by Do Inc. Is that the answer that you were looking for? Okay. Um, our district did away with iPads. Oh my, okay. So um, much of what I'm doing can be done using like if you're doing green screen effects, you can do it with web-based editing tools like, um, what is it called again? Social the W, We Video. Yes. Um, so We Video uh, has green screen features. So does iMovie if you're a Mac school. CapCut. CapCut's a great free app on your phone. Okay. But little ones, it might be a little harder, but. And layering animation might be something you can do in, um, you know, Canva, in Keynote, in um, Google Slides. So some of these have workarounds in other things. And I do know that the iJack app with the augmented reality has a web browser version that would work in Chrome. So there's possibilities. And I have a iPad, you know, I'm an iPad art room. So I design my lessons for the iPad because that's what's available to me. But I'm sure there's lots of people who know how to convert these concepts into whatever platform you need. Okay, so I see Helen was answering questions like cap wing. Okay. Oh, she had lots of answers. Wick Editor, it's great for digital animations. Brush Ninja, cool. You know what? Don't forget that there is a Wakelet and you could add your ideas to that Wakelet because wouldn't these be great? Go ahead and do that. You know, share your ideas for other kinds of um, tools. Plus, if you have lessons that are using dynamic media that you want that are based on children's books, please add that to the Wakelet too. So we could all learn from each other. Um, let's see, there's one last thing on the very last slide of my presentation was a link to where all my resources were. So I forgot to share that, but um, you'll see that on the Wakelet. Like it'll just show like all of the books, and then if you click on 
any of the books, you can go find my resources. So there is a few more minutes. Does anybody else want to share anything or have any other questions for me? I want to hear about your book. <laughs> Let's hear more about the book. Or at least what it's about. Yeah, because I know what it's about, but I'm sure they'd love to hear. Okay. So um, actually, I found out about um, Amanda Fox had a publishing company that she um, published her augmented reality book, Marker Town, through. And she that's an augmented reality book that was powered by Quiver Vision. And so Quiver Vision, if you're not familiar, Quiver Vision um, like has coloring pages that come to life through their app and then they like have 3D versions and it's your coloring shows up 3D and other kinds of things happen with their app too. So she made a, a children's book called Marker Town and then incorporated these three, these augmented reality aspects from different, at different points in the book. So if you had the Quiver Vision app, you could scan the page of her book and something magical would happen, like a Ferris wheel would start spinning or um, the marker that you just colored on all of a sudden is like three dimensional and you can view it as if it's standing right off the page. And I, um, when I saw that, I was thinking, hold it, this is like making so much sense to me because I've been working with augmented reality and transdigital art for I don't know, six years or so. Yeah, I think six years. And I've been trying to figure out how do you turn transdigital art into um, something you could hand to somebody? You know, like I know how to do it for the art display at the community library you know, where we can attach the QR code next to each art. And there's, you know, you just got to tell people, get your mobile device out, scan that, and then you'll get to see more. But I thought, well, what if it was a whole story and every single thing in the story might have an animation piece? How do you do this? So it wasn't really connecting for me. I couldn't figure it out until I reached out to Amanda and she explained hey, you know, we can get Quiver Vision to power a book for you. And so I wrote a pitch for um, the Snow Flurry Fairy. And as I was talking about the Snow Flurry Fairy, they looked at the robots behind me and they said, tell us about those robots. <laughs> like, oh, okay. So um, I was explaining that all of these robots have, um, are experienced, you know, I have six of these robots. You can see four of them right now, right? And so each of these robots are expressing a different emotion, sort of like the color monster lesson. So I've got like anxietizer, and this is cyber sad. This one is rigamajoy, and this one's hot bot. And then I have two more. I've got auto adore, who's purple and loving. And I have Calm Matic, which is green and very calm. And so I was explaining how each of the robots expresses a different emotion and comes to life with augmented reality. And they're like, there's a story there. How about you write up that as a pitch? <laughs> like, okay, but you don't like the Snowflake Fairy? And I'm like, yes, yes, we do. <laughs> we like the Snowflake Fairy, but we're doing both, right? Those we're robots. Doing both. <laughs> So um, so I, I, I sat down and I was like, nothing. I'm like, hold it. I didn't make them with a story in mind. And I'm like, how do I pull a story out of nowhere? And then it, it came to me. I got a story out of nowhere. And not only out of nowhere, but like, I love it. And it's, it's um, little Peter on meter. And he is just got an upgrade. He, he's got the um, programmable, empathetic, touch-sensitive, emotional robot um, 
sensory upgrade in his you know software and so now if his buttons are pushed he can feel emotions so he doesn't know what is the appropriate emotion to have in different circumstances so he has to think it through and so it's going to ask the reader oh what okay here's the situation what button what button needs to be pushed here and um so when he expresses or when he gets those feelings all the things all the robot things happen to him you know like his gears spin his lid flips he lets out steam he like has all these emotional responses just like humans do but the robot version which kind of removes some of the shame that might have come or the negative connotation that comes with some of those phrases like oh you're touchy no you know i'm touch sensitive yeah that's true <laughs> It's just, it's just who I am, you know? And so anyway, it just made sense to me. And so I'm working on that and I, you know, the manuscript pretty much wrote itself. And, but I'm in such an early stage right now. I'm, um, I turned in my manuscript. They're gonna look it over. An editor is gonna be assigned to me and then I'd go from there. So I'm in such an early stage, I don't know how much of my story is going to change and what direction is going to switch on me. So I'm very much up in the air and there's lots of moving parts. So I started to write a blog about it. And just last night, I was like, so many moving parts, I can't really nail down like what my ideas are going to be because they might all change and I don't want to get too committed to things that need to go. But um, I did start thinking about moving parts, literally. You know, what does it look like when you animate gears? And what if springs are wound too tight, then what happens? And, um, you know, I had some other like switches and levers and gauges switching. So I'm working on it. And if you go to my blog at fugalfun.com, you can join my journey and see how it's going. Thanks for sharing. That is. I hadn't even heard the whole story yet. So that, that was awesome. That's my um, first time sharing this story. So. I don't think I heard that whole story. And um, I just knew the people helping and stuff, but I hope they do the fairy one too. Cause I know you've talked about that one before. But I but signed I just, a contract for the fairy one too. Okay. So I'm holding it to them. Yeah. Hey, them to do it. It. yeah. They'll do it. But the, I saw your thing with your moving parts, how you're animating them. That must be so fun, but um, <laughs> just be be gentle on yourself because your book is probably seven times longer to create than any other children's book out there. I mean, you know, you're not just drawing illustrations, you're creating animation for every single thing on that page. So, well, and that's another thing. I don't know how much of anything, you know, so like, I don't know if every page is going to be animated. I, but then I don't, what we'll if have to wait is. and see. We'll yeah. <laughs> I cannot wait. That story is going to be so good. I'm so excited for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so um, let me just check the chat again really quick. Um, let's see. Thank you to the people that stuck around and listened to my stories. Do you have anything else that anybody want to unmute and share or tell me a story? We have two more minutes officially, but I could hang around too. So. All right. Um, balloons over Broadway. That is. Helen, do you have a link to that? You could put it in the wakelet. Broom. You know, did I ever share a link to the wakelet? I could do that in the chat. Um, balloons over Broadway. I saw the Do Ink Animation app people were sharing some um examples were those yours Helen that they were sharing where you can decorate the balloons and then film them with green screen and then make it seem like a Thanksgiving day parade down the city street it's adorable oh you know what did I direct message I did I didn't do it to everybody did I see if that works okay all right, so thank you so much for um, stopping in and being a part of this session. And I did record it, so I 
will put it up in, I think, do I put it in the wakelet? I have to go back and read my directions and um, share it out with at least Christina. So anyway, take care, everybody. Have a great day and thanks for stopping in and you're free to go. And yeah, but I'll be here if anybody has any questions. I'll just hang out for a second. Okay, bye-bye.